Hey guys, Brendo and Productions here, and welcome to my second Git tutorial. In the first tutorial, we went over what Git is, how to get it, how to set up a Git repository, how to add files to watch, and how to commit your changes. We also went over how to see what a certain commit contains and how to see what commits have been made in the past. In this tutorial, we're going to go over a few more finer details of managing um, some files. And we're also going to go over the finer details of adding and removing files inside of your Git repository. This tutorial should not be as long as the first one, so sit back, relax, and you know what? Open up, open up Git and try along with this video. So just a quick recap, if we type in Git status, you can see that we've made no changes since the last tutorial. And if we type in git log, you can see that we've actually made two commits. We added an important note and we added another important line. And indeed, if we actually look at the contents of important note.txt, you can see that there's two lines. This is something very important and this is something else very important. So one of the primary use cases of actually using version control is using it to undo changes that you may have forgot about. So say you make a lot of changes to a file and then you actually want to undo these changes. Version control is very handy at doing that. So I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate that right now. So uh, if we actually open up important note.txt, now let's just say that it's late at night. I'm tired, it's four in the morning and for some reason I decide it's a good idea to take this something that's very important and I'm gonna change it to nothing. Right, obviously a bad idea. We need to keep track of this information, uh, but I just decide, you know what? I don't feel comfortable having this on my computer anymore. I'm going to change that something to nothing. So I go ahead and do so. And uh, then I save the file. And then uh, if we actually go to git status, we can see that we have modified the important note.txt file. Now, at this stage, there are a couple things we can do to get our changes back. So let's just say that then after this, we went to bed and then we come to this uh, directory the next morning and you can see that we did in fact make changes to the important note. So then if we type git diff, you can see that what we did is we removed the line, this is something very important. And then we added the line, this is nothing very important. Now this is basically diff lingo for saying we changed the word something to nothing, right? Except it does line by line differences, so it says we removed the line and then added a new one. Now, as you can see in our previous git status, you can actually discard changes in the working directory. So as long as your changes have not yet been git added, uh, we can go ahead and simply discard them. And this basically moves the changes that you've made and moves them back to the, the latest commit. So if we actually type git log dash one, uh, which only shows the topmost entry in git log, you can see that the last change we made was adding another single important line. So our goal is to actually get back to that commit. And we can do that as git tells us by saying git checkout dash dash important note dot txt. And then once we do that, if we type git status, you can see that uh, there's nothing to commit. And then if we actually open up important note, actually, if we just look at the contents of important note, you can see that nothing did, in get did indeed get changed to something. Now, this method only works if we last night did not commit our changes. However, let's just simulate what would happen if we did indeed commit our changes. So I'm actually gonna try something fancy here and I'm going to say, I'm just going to use said to replace something with nothing. Um, this is not necessary whatsoever. However, I'm going to try it out. So now if we go ahead and look at the contents of important note, you can see that both instances of something have been replaced with nothing. Now, you could ignore the said, um, which is basically Linux's standard stream editor and I just use said to replace something with nothing. However, this is the same as going into the file and replacing something with nothing. 
So now if we actually go ahead and get, remember we're still in last night mode. So we say get status, we see that we made changes to the file and we wanna commit these changes. So we go ahead and add the important note to the staging area. And now if we type get status one more time, you can see that the uh, file is actually in the staging area. And then we go ahead and commit it. And since we're, we think this is a smart decision last night, we can go ahead and say, for security reasons, change something to nothing. And then once we do that, we can actually type git log, and we can see that our latest commit was indeed changing something to nothing. So now we go to bed, we wake up the next morning, and we boot up our machine, and we look at the contents of the important note. And we can see that we accidentally changed something to nothing. What were we doing last night? Now, if we were not using version control, what could we do to resolve this problem? We could hope that the editor we are using saved some sort of backup. So again, using Microsoft Word as an example, it would probably have some sort of backup somewhere that you could go ahead and load. Uh, if you were using Vim as an editor, you might still have the swap file of that edit. However, there's nothing really much else we can do. Say that we totally forgot what this something was, and that's why it was in this file, because we would, we would forget it. There's really nothing that we could do to get that data back. However, since we're using version control, it's actually quite trivial, which is exactly what version control is useful for. So in the morning, we wake up and we see that important note has been changed. So of course, we look at our git commit history. So we go into git log and we see that some clown actually changed the something in our file to nothing for what they call security reasons. However, we know that our machine is safe and it's only stored locally, so this shouldn't be a problem. So Forgetting the reasons, forgetting about the reasons why this person changed the something to nothing. All we care about is reverting the file. We just want that something back. Now, there are a few ways to do this. Again, one of the easiest ways, say we want to manually do it, we can actually just type git log, and we know that the commit hash is 81A00. So then we can type git show 81A00. And once we do that, we can actually see what that something was, right? Because we can see the exact changes that were made. And we see that indeed that something was something. Whoa. So we can actually press Q to get out of here. I don't think I actually ever told you how to get out of git log or git show. You basically press Q, which means quit. So we know that this last commit was exactly what we wanted, right? So if we type git log dash one, we can see the exact commit that we want to revert. So the way that Git works is if you actually want to revert some changes, you select the specific commit that you want to revert and tell it to revert. And then Git will revert all changes made in that commit. And the command to do this is actually Git revert. So much the same way as we saw what the changes were, we could type Git revert 81A00. And then it's going to open up this commit message in your text editor. Now, when we actually used the commit command, we passed the dash M flag, which allowed us to specify a commit message on the command line. However, if you omitted that dash M flag, it would do this. Um, it would open up a text editor, your text editor of choice usually, and then it would ask you to type in a commit message and the commit message would be anything without this little pound sign, this hashtag, this sh, if you will. So, since a revert of a commit is actually a commit itself, you can see that it's prompting us to type a commit message. And by default, it simply says revert, and then the commit message that was attached to the commit that we're trying to revert. Right, so this commit is com this commit message is usually descriptive enough. So in order to actually keep this commit message, we just save the text file, and we're going to go ahead and save and quit here. And you can see that it actually committed the changes. So now if we type git log, 
You can see last night we had the commit for security reasons change something to nothing. And just now we've committed revert for security reasons change something to nothing. So now if we actually look at the contents of our important note file, you can see that our all important something is there once again. So basically we were able to use the power of version control to take stupid changes and put them back to where we wanted. Now, this would be extremely important, say that uh, the computer ended up, uh, I don't know, crashing. And then we wanted to get our changes back or we wanted to revert what we did. Uh, this, this method could be used to do just that. Now, one other way to actually perform this, uh, this change is, uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and revert what we just did, which is actually quite interesting that you can do that. So I'm going to, bring us back to four minutes ago and say git revert uh, 20 uh, uh, git revert 24 c5 right and actually what I'm doing here is I'm just reverting the revert that I just did right and you can see that the commit message reflects that we're reverting reverting for security reasons and then once we do that we can see in the git log that we changed something to nothing, then we reverted that change, and then we reverted the revert. So now if we go ahead and look at the contents of something important, or what did, what was it called? Important note, you can see that it's now back to nothing. So all I did there was revert us back to where I was before I reverted, because there's actually one more way to revert. And the reason you may want to use this is as follows. So if you look in the git log details, you can see that having for security reasons change something to nothing and then reverting those changes, that's actually a little, a little bit cumbersome. Um, if you have no intention of ever going back to this changing something to nothing, why would you even need to keep track of the fact that you changed this something to nothing? Now, in a perfect world, you would want to keep track of everything that you do. And then later down the line, you can see the exact changes that you made, and then you can justify those changes. And you can keep a track record of what you actually did. But if you don't actually want to keep a track record of what you actually did, you can what's called reset the current commit history. And you can actually reset hard to reset everything. So let's just say that I want to forget everything that I did. I don't want to change some... I don't, I don't want to remember that I changed something to nothing. In fact, I don't even want to remember that I reverted the security. I don't even want to remember that I reverted the revert. This is all just a mess and I just want to forget about it. So we just basically want to act like we got right back to commit 2E75C, right? We never made any changes after that. So we can use the git reset dash dash hard function. And that basically hard resets all command line hist or commit history to a specific point. Now, keep in mind that this is an extremely destructive command, right? If you have a bunch of changes and then you reset, your changes are irreversibly changed. So it is extremely important that you actually want to do this. And Git will provide no confirmation that you want to do this because if you're typing it in, you obviously want to do it. So be very, very careful. So, and then you actually provide the commit hash here. Now I've actually forgotten exactly what the commit hash is. Okay, 2E75. So now if we git reset dash dash hard to 2E75, you can see that it says head is now at 2E75 added another single important line. So a head is basically the most recent commit. So it's basically telling us, hey, yeah, we've reset it. And now the most recent commit is added another single important line. And then if we type in git log, you can see that all of the, the changes we made, all of the unimportant changes we made have now been reset. Now this is actually a little bit scary because what if we wanted to keep one of those changes, right? There's no way to get back to it. There's no way to see what those changes were. So like I said, the git reset hard function is destructive. However, it can be used to uh, clean up your changes like we just did. So that concludes part two of my Git tutorial series, just in review, we went over um, reverting changes. We went over seeing these changes, what the changes were, and then we went over how to actually reset these changes. 
Hopefully everything was clear to you. If you have any questions, please go ahead and leave them in the comments, or you can go ahead and head over to BP Forms, which is linked in the description. Thanks a ton for watching, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Peace.